Hello and welcome to the University of Northern Colorado's Xeric Demonstration Garden. I'm Dr. Graham Baird and I'm going to give you a short video lesson on how to take strike and dip with a Brutton Pocket Transit. I like using this location as a way to introduce students to taking strike and dip because there's these plot markers which have a very nice flat surface. And that way it removes some of the complexities of say identifying planar structure which you want to take the strike and dip of, of say bedding, foliation, uh, joint surfaces, and allows the student to focus on just the mechanics of actually using the Brunton compass and taking the measurements appropriately. Often of course a field notebook is used to smooth out the rough surfaces and give you a good average of that orientation that you're trying to get. But in this case, because the plot marker face is so flat and smooth, we can do a direct measurement on it. So the first thing, after you've set up your button compass with proper declination and are uh, familiar with all the parts and how they work, you want to make sure you hold the button compass the correct way. And that is with the sighting arm away from you. And the way I always remember to hold it with the sighting arm away from you is, I call this thing the bear stabber. And so if I ever get attacked by bear, this is my single best defense. But holding the brunt in the right way is important if you're gonna follow right hand rule. And I've set myself up to follow right hand rule because as I'm holding the brunt and looking at the face that I'm gonna take the strike and dip of, it is dipping down to the right of me. Some geologists like to use the right hand rule this way where they put their fingers down dip, palm against the uh, face that they're going to take a measurement of, and their th thumb points to the strike direction that they're going to take. So first thing, remember we have two levels in there. We have to watch the correct level when taking different components of the strike and dip measurement. So, we hold the button, we want this in an exactly horizontal plane, and we want this edge right here to be flat against the surface we're taking a measurement of. We're then going to rotate our button until the bullseye level has been centered, at which point we can then take the strike measurement looking at the north arrow. So let's take a look at this process of taking strike from the top down. You can see that bottom edge is flush against the surface. The bullseye level has been leveled. Now at which point we can then measure the strike orientation looking at the north arrow. And in this case, it's north 46 west. And this measurement can be written down in your field notebook. I'm going to show the process again using an azimuth compass. Same procedure bottom edge flat against the surface, the bullseye level has been leveled, and then we can read it as 314. And this measurement can be written down in your field notebook. And once you've written that measurement down, you're going to take the brunton, and now you're going to hold it in the vertical plane like this. The brunton may be this way with the sighting arm or bear stabber pointing down, or it may be this way with the mirror pointing down. How you know which is correct is when you look at the Brutton, you got to make sure that the numbers on the clinometer are on the bottom and the bar level is on the top. And so for taking the dip measurement from this orientation or this side of our dipping plane, the Brutton needs to be in this orientation here. I then crouch down and take a look and now I'm going to rotate this lever on the back until the bar level is now level. And I just do a double check to make sure it looks like I'm directly down dip. And here's the view looking directly at the face of the Brunton when taking dip. Notice how the bar level has been leveled, the numbers are on the bottom and the dip reads as 50 degrees. 
This procedure is identical whether you're using an azimuth compass or a quadrant compass. And here's the view from the backside, just showing that when you're looking at the front of the Brunton, you're moving this lever to make sure that the bar level is level. And then the last part of the measurement is I'm going to look and see what is the dip direction. And so I'm just going to generally hold the Brunton pointed down dip and just read the quadrant. And in this case, it's northeast. And just to clarify what I'm doing in this last step, I'm holding the Brunton horizontal. I have the sighting arm or bear stabber pointed directly down dip. I check the bullseye level to ensure that it's horizontal. And I'm looking at what quadrant the north end of the needle is pointed to. And in this case, it's the northeast quadrant. 